think we're live. We're such pros. We've been talking for three minutes, and then we all realized that we weren't actually live yet. So, hi. Hi. <laughs> all right. Everybody, okay, so my feed just pull, pulled in. Hi. All right, everybody. We're we're working it hard here. It's kind of crazy. We've been oh, scrambling. Okay, I'm going to turn my off. Good. For some reason, my YouTube has also got sound on it. I apologize for that. There we go. There we go. All right. Um, well, I'm out of order, I'm going to be in trouble. Hey, uh -oh. guys. All right. We got <laughs> Linda. This, oh, good. This should be fun. It's going to be fun. Yes, it is. All right. It's just a bunch of quilters trying to work technology. And only one of us is a technology guru, and that would be Angela. And I'm doing this from my hotel in Iowa. So please excuse any messes that happen, okay? <laughs> <laughs> She's going to be fine. It's all going to work out. <laughs> yeah. It's all good. It's all fun and games till your bobbin runs out. It's all fun and games. <laughs> it's all fun and games. Awesome. All right. Big topic tonight, right, guys? Batting. Oh, batting. Yeah, we're talking about batting tonight. That's right. Super important. <laughs> it's very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, how's everybody since the last time we talked? Kathy's in Iowa teaching at ABQS. Angela, you're at home? I am until Sunday, and then I'm going to Iowa. Because Kathy oh, and I can't be there at the same time. I know. They couldn't Crazy. Us. <laughs> and I'm at the shop in Whitby, and I'm going nowhere. <laughs> I'm here. Maybe crazy? Are you going crazy? I'm here waiting for spring. <laughs> yes. Going crazy waiting for spring. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Our so, tulips have already bloomed. <laughs> it's, it's spring. Spring's over. We're we're on to the next season. <laughs> <laughs> no, we uh, haven't even hit spring yet. What are you talking about? Can you Ooh. see any any chat what? feed or questions or anything? I can't We have someone on from <laughs> Australia. Yes, Mar Mary. Thank you. Well, I hope I said that awesome. right, Mar Mary. Maybe it's Mary. Awesome. I love all of you guys. Tell us where you're from. I'm seeing some comments. We have hello from California. Um, we can't hear Tracy, somebody said, but we'll and see. Someone else said they could. Right. So maybe it's on that end. Oh, um, NB is New Brunswick. New Brunswick. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Tracy. All right. We got Oklahoma. Hello, Sue. Someone else from Iowa? I can't right. see anything, so I'm not responding because I can't see any words. I don't know who's who's over on the side there. Just right. Well, how are you here? I have a gray bar, so. We have Apollo from Omaha. All right. Pennsylvania. This is awesome, you guys. This is really kind of exciting. Batting is a phenomenal topic. I talked about it today and the new owner's class and how important it is to have good batting, right? Yep. Yes. Sorry. Were we supposed to respond? We're sure. We're we got Texas. We got Nebraska, Pennsylvania. I'll keep watching. You guys can maybe start. How does that sound? Yeah, I was going to say, I tried to see... I tried to change a screen to see if I could actually see any of the chat, but then it just gives me the entire chat and I can't see anything. So I'll just stay under, I'll just go back under the bar. All right. Tracy, you may need to, well, I don't know. We're trying to get it big enough. You can see what Tracy's showing because Tracy made all of our samples because she's awesome that way. Um, but then she gets, oh. she may get far enough away that we can't hear her too. All right, we got Margaret from Queensland, Australia. Wow. That's and somebody's awesome. got a Millie 30 on the way. Isn't that sound exciting? I love I love it when machines come. Is in. that Margaret? Yes, it, it is, is Margaret. Margaret. <laughs> Margaret. Margaret and I Fargo, know. North Dakota. Okay. Yeah. All right. So where should we start with batting? My batting says four oh, inches. Oh, and we got right. Yes, if your batting says four inches, you need to you need to not have squares that are bigger than four inches, like spaces that are bigger than four inches, or you'll have something called migration, which means the batting will just fall apart and your quilt will get lumpy. 
So if it says four, that's really small for batting. Typically batting is six to eight inches. So right. um, I'm not sure what kind of batting that is, but that's that's quite small. That's pretty dense quilting. Right. I use the rule of my fist. I yeah. never face larger than my fist. Yeah. But I like a lot of quilting anyway, so um, that's just that's just me. I don't know if it's Sherry or Cherie would like an episode on starting a long arm business. That's a good one. I just responded to her saying, yes, that's a great topic. We'll, we'll probably topic. do that. Hmm. Sounds good. All right. So what can, kind of batting do you two use? Um, I use, okay, so I use all kinds of batting. Um, mm -hmm. Right now in the showroom, I know we have Quilter's Dream. Um, we have their just plain cotton. We have their 80, 20. I'm sure we have wool in there. My, I really liked Hobbs, um, Hobbs Tuscany wool. Um, mm -hmm. that's my preferred wool. Quilter stream is also really good though. Um, and then, mm -hmm. uh, we have Hobbs black. It's hard to get a good mm -hmm. black batting. So I just, Oh, have you tried Quilter's dream? I like Quilter's dream. Hobbs black. Um, Hobbs has a little bit of cotton in it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, is true. Not poly. And right. that's why I have Hobbs. So yeah. Um, and it's really it's it's quilter stream is too, but it's really black. Um, the more poly they get in them, the less color they get in them a lot of times, the less dye they can absorb. Um, and I want them black because I want them to make my bright colors really pop. I do a lot of quilting with black and really bright batiks. Um, I want my blacks to stay black and I want my batiks to be really, really bright. So yeah. Ironically, the only quilts that I've ever shown on this were just ones that I did for fun. They're not, they're not my, my style. <laughs> so, so, yeah. so Tracy, when I first um, inherited, when we first purchased our store, the previous owner did Pelon, mm -hmm. which um, I really struggled with because I had to order in such large quantities and it would take forever to come over on the boat and it was in a gray package. While it was good batting, I had some issues with it having black streaks right across the whole fold. So that means that whole bolt was bad. Mm -hmm. So um, COVID hit and I started wanting to do some research of trying to buy a little bit more American and more home, close to home. Mm -hmm. And at least, you know, I consider kind of Canada and this whole, like, the whole continent here, like a thing. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, kind of thing. Um, I uh, researched and we tried uh, Quilter's Dream and I just fell in love and I love the ease of the shipping. And, um, yeah. and I love the quality. I've never once had something I've like, you know, hey, listen, X, Y, and Z, this is an issue. So... We have the cotton, both in natural and white, and the 80-20 natural and white, and the wool. I have the green poly, which is kind of a nice, fun, it's it's actually really pretty awesome. And um, Do you do Dream Angel? I did not, but I've done the puff. I have the puff as well, and I have yeah. the poly. I love their poly, too. Their poly is, is excellent for compared to some. But I quilt for others. So quilting for others, I have had pretty much, I think, everything come through our store. Yeah. Yeah. I've done quite a bit with Dream Angel, too. It's great because it's fire resistant. Um, so for, like, my father-in-law, when he wasn't ambulatory, I was using Dream Angel. Baby what quilt. do you use, Tracy? Yeah. I've never even heard of that Dream Angel. I'll have to check it out. Mm -hmm. um predominantly hobs i've tried uh, or used not tried um i've used warm and natural not for many many years uh warm and natural and then mostly hobs i have a couple of quilter stream um here i've got uh i have the quilter stream puff here just to try it one of my one of my customers asked me to order her some so she loves it. So I ordered one for me just to play with and it's lovely. I wouldn't use it in a bed quilt, but I'm 56 and I don't like polyester. I have a hard enough time regulating my body temperature without putting polyester on top of me at night. 
So um, I wouldn't put it in a bed quilt, but I would <laughs> Angela's laughing. Yeah, because I'm there with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like everybody can relate, I'm sure. I get into bed and I, I put the heat, I have a little spinny heater thing. I put that on first, set it for an hour. But then after about 10 minutes, I start to get hot. So I have a lot tall tower. I've got the thing spinning above me. And then I've got the tower spinning with the fan. So the fan is kind of blowing the warm air. Then I get too hot, so I shut the heater off. And then I've got one fan coming to the side, one from the top. And I'm under the covers with one leg out. <laughs> and then all night long, it's throw yeah. the covers off. Then I shiver, bring the covers on. Then I sweat, throw the covers off. It's, it's horrible. <laughs> all right, Tracy, we have a question up here from Joanne. I don't know if you can see it. It's, it says, is Quilter's Dream a mixed batting? Quilter's Dream is a brand of batting and they have a gazillion types of batting. So when we say, I like Quilter's Dream, then I turn around and I say, I like 80, 20 and a hundred percent cotton and they're polyester. Those are the brand, those are within that Quilter's Dream, their products that they offer. Yeah. So Hobbs is one company. Quilter's Dream is another company. Pelon is another company. And there's probably the more. Warm. Oh, the Warm Company. What? The Warm Company. Oh yeah. And the Warm Company. And then within each one of those companies, they have lots of different types blends mixes mm -hmm. colors all that kind of thing so um yeah so it just it's just the brand and then here's another great question from sherry she's i've never used black but just ordered a roll a little guidance on fabrics to use it with i'm assuming to not use white or with white or light colors but i sure. haven't realized it makes your colors pop yeah true not you don't want to use it with um, really light colors because if you use it with white, you're going to end up with gray. <laughs> or, or you can put it if you're double batting, you can put a white batting on top of it and stop that as well. Right. Oh, that's a great. That's a great suggestion. Yeah. So if you have a black backing, but you have a light top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it's all about not having the bearding happening on the back. That's typically why we're using black batting is so that when you have a really dark backer you don't get pulls of white batting through to your backing. Um, so yeah. All right, got somebody up from Ohio, that's awesome. Bearding, we could talk about bearding too in a little bit, couldn't we? <laughs> All those terms, those B terms. <laughs> yeah, right. So well, we'll go ahead and start, Angela, what would be bearding? So I'll watch the comments here. What would be bearding since okay. I brought it up, sorry. Um, I don't, yeah. Bearding is when um, your batting migrates out the back of your backing. So typically, there could be a couple reasons that it happens. Um, the first one is batting has a right and a wrong side. So if you flip your batting upside down when you put it onto your backer and it has a scrim, a scrim is a glue layer that is used to fuse your bat, your, your, the fibers together to make the bat, right? Um, that scratchy scrim layer needs to be touching your backing. Okay, so if you do it the other way and it has to punch through that hard scrim and then there's something soft before the backing, it'll just pull the fiber right out the back of your quilt, right? That's bearding when you have those fibers coming out the back of your quilt. And you tend to see it a little bit more when you're using really dark backing and really white fat, you know, batting because there's such a contrast between the two of them. Um, so having your backing, your batting on upside down can cause it um having a needle that has a burr on it can cause it if it can catch extra batting and pull it through that hole it will um sometimes you'll get it with different threads depending on the thread that you're using i see it more with cotton threads than poly threads typically because it's more grippy um and then mm, yeah. i have just seen it on some digitally printed fabrics like nothing i could do could make it stop um and have talked to a couple fabric manufacturers that had started to print their wide backs um, mm -hmm. and they couldn't understand why like the purple and like the really intense dyed fabrics were getting more bearding on them. Um, mm -hmm. And so I ran a bunch of fabric or, or, or a lot of samples for one of the fabric companies to show them, you know, darker colors, more bearding and then how to get around it. Cause they need to be educated on, Okay, so if you're doing this and it's making your bat your backing stiffer and you're having a harder time punching through, then you're 
that's going to be one of the things that happens. Washing it will help with that too. Washing your backing, not your batting. Um, but you can wash a lot of battings. Right. So Sue brought up a good point for all of these that we are discussing. Mm -hmm. Hobbs and Quilter's Dream, they both have sample packs that you can potentially get. And maybe even from, we had some at our store, but you could also probably send, ask them and send some an email or something. And I bet they would send you a sample. So Tracy, do you have an example of something that is not double batted? Because we have somebody who wants to know why you would double bat. And you've got some good examples on that one. I have all the samples and all the combinations. So what would you like to see first? So somebody wants to know why you would double bat. Oh, okay. So I double bat. Um, if I'm doing some kind of custom work and it's a wall hanging, I love double batting. You can double bat for a bed quilt, but at that point you need to be a little bit more mindful of what you're using because you don't want it to be super stiff. And I'll, I'll um, show you that in a, in a minute. Double batting is going to give you a lot of texture, a lot more texture and definition in your stitches than if you just used a single bat. Um, different combinations of double batting are going to give you different results. So if we're doing a wall hanging, I'll pull this one up. Oh, hopefully you can see it. I'll get a little closer. Yeah, we can see it. Perfect. Can, okay. <laughs> so see how much, see how much you can see all the feathers and everything. So that's what I wanted. Um, very thin thread. I didn't want to see thread. I want to see texture. So with this one, I have a layer of Hobbs 8020. Uh, next to the backing. So the Hobbs is first. That gives you your structure. That makes sure that this is, is like flat and kind of stiffish. So it hangs nice. And then in this case, it has um, poly down on top. I use the polyester instead of the wool. They both have a nice, um, a nice loft to them. But when it's a wall hanging, there's no need to go to the expense of the wool because wool is really expensive. Mm -hmm. um, the one behind me, the So Kind of Wonderful one, I quilted that a long time ago. It's always been a wall hanging and it's got 80-20 in it and then a layer of wool because I didn't know I, back then, that's 15 years ago or something. I didn't know uh, that I could use, do you know what I mean? And I would have used a poly down or just a a full polyester puff rather than putting the wool in there because wool's really expensive. So I would stick to just putting the wool in a bed quilt where, where it matters because it's a natural fiber. Yeah. So anytime you do that or anytime you want more of a, dare I say comforter kind of look, I have a sample right. here that's got two layers of the wool. Um, and I'm, pretty sure I got a sample that's got two layers of the poly and it's very comfortery like yes. you know what I mean? it's kind of. puffy it's got that 1980s poly puff look you know which some people want for a bed for uh, especially a bed quilt so mm -hmm. yeah so also a great question with that and I'm kind of skipping around on the questions I'm going to get everybody here should you always double bat with wool no only if you want to. Do you want me to show you the, the two samples with the wool so you can see them? Yes, please. I do. <laughs> I'll have to. Okay. Now I'm getting them out of order. So just a minute. <laughs> do you have any, well, what in, okay. Do you want to go in order? I mean. <laughs> no, it's okay. I've already pulled them apart. So this is, this is. I have a problem. Pops. This is the heirloom washable wool. It's like quilting through butter. It's yes. lovely. Yes. So this sample is Quilting just one. Quilting through butter. What? Quilting, Quilting through butter. <laughs> New <laughs> statement. <It's beautiful. laughs> so that's one layer of the hobs. The wool. And, and you can see how it doesn't really have structure because it's so soft, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then this one is two layers. I've got them pinned together. This one is two layers of wool. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So see the diff can you see the difference? Oh yeah. Yes. Now what I also want you to notice is the fabric draw. So see how this is a little like skewed? Because there's so much batting in there, 
it's you may need to i was actually going to block my samples and angela said i can't believe you're going to block your samples <laughs> so i left it just so you can see what happens oh very easy to get this back to being straight it's not a problem mm -hmm. it's not an issue at all but that's the difference that you would get so it would be very light it, this is very light and fluffy um very floppy and comfortable there's nothing stiff about it at all tracy can we back up a little bit? Somebody wants to know if it's possible to pin you so you can see the samples bigger. So I'm going to make you bigger and I'm going to pull Angela and I out for just a little bit. So you just keep talking and doing your, let's have you do your show of your samples and then we'll keep it full of questions. Okay. We're not leaving you. Okay. No, just keep talking to me. Okay. <laughs> we'll keep talking. <laughs> okay. There. Oh, there we go. Okay. So. This is, oh, that's not even that. Just a minute. I got the wrong one. See, now I'm all discombobulated. This is the, this is the dream, the quilter's dream, Polly. Honestly, the wool is the same. So, oh, there's the wool right there. Just a minute. Tea game. So there's the wool, one layer there and then this is not working out this is the this is the two layers together so there's there's one there's two so it's just bigger and and fluffier it's still just a soft because the wool is nice and soft um this is very floppy and even with two layers this is very floppy as well okay you're doing awesome, Tracy. We got gotcha. you. Okay. Do you want to keep rolling? We can't. He, we, I'll pop in when I can see you, but I want to keep you as big as possible while you're showing the samples. That's fine. As long as people can hear me and we're not having that sound issue. Okay. You're doing fabulous. I'll, I'll make sure. And so we'll trace. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is the poly down. So this is another one. Now, what I want to say about the poly down and the wool you could do a wool hanging with just one layer of an 80-20 or a cotton. You're not going to get a lot of texture. You could do a wool hanging with two layers of one of those battings. Um, I would never do a wool hanging with just one layer of one of these lofty, loftier battings. If you're, if you're doing that and all you're going for is texture, it's not going to lay nice on the wall. Does that make sense? Um, you have to have either the 80-20 or 100% cotton or a cotton wool blend or something that's got a structure to it to be the back layer. And then this is just meant to be loft. If you're going to use these on their own, you're looking at just a bed quilt. Um, you also wouldn't use these for anything like a table runner or placemats or anything that you needed it fairly flat because it's got too much puff and you know, things are going to spill. You wouldn't want to put a glass on that because it's more likely going to tip over. Um, so that visually looks similar. It's not as lofty, so it's not as puffy as the wool. But like I said, if this is something for a table or a wall hanging, put some 80-20 or 100% cotton behind it and use it for your wall hangings. I guess you could use it in a bed. Personally, I don't want polyester on top of me. Um, the wool is a little bit loftier than the poly, but not much. You're still getting the same kind of idea. Okay. Tracy, can we answer some questions real quick and I'll get, I'll pull Angela in and then we'll do a little, yeah. bring you back full again. Okay. So I'm going to yeah, get Angela good. in here. Hi. Okay. So let's answer. Um, I want to get some, oh, that's to show Tracy to be better. Sorry about that. And, um, how about Susie Luttrell? There you go. Yeah. Yep. She asked, does the, does, yep, let's go ahead. Does the more dense quilting make the quilt stiffer? Yes. Sure yes. Does. It, it also makes it less warm. If you're talking about um, mm -hmm. a bed quilt, the more quilting that goes in it, what you're actually doing is quilting out the air that's in the batting, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. if you hammer, hammer that in with, you know, really dense stuff and it's, and it, flattens it all right out, it's not going to be very warm at all. Okay. So then leading perfect, perfect segue, Tracy. 
Margaret asks, so with two layers, should it make it warmer for a comforter type quilt? Yes. Yes, ma'am. All right. Perfect. I think we're getting the answers. Do we have some more show and tell? And I'll make uh, Angela and I smell again. So we've got some Hobbs, regular Hobbs 8020. This is like the go to around here anyway. It's 80% polyester, 80% cotton, 20% polyester. It doesn't have a lot of loft, but it's got a beautiful um, floppy drape. I love it. I've been using it for a million years. That's the Hobbs 8020. You can see texture, but it's not uh, it's not too much. It's not super thin, but it's nice and it's nice and soft. So this is great for bed quilts. It's great for lap quilts, uh, little kids quilts, um, all those things. If you wanted to uh, double bat it, the I don't think you can see it close enough. That doesn't matter. I've got a different sample anyways. You can, on a wall hanging, double bat uh, just two layers of the 80-20. That works really good, too. The arrow quilt that I'll show you in a minute down here has two layers of the Hobbs 80-20, the bleached in white, because the quilt is mostly white. Um, and it's beautiful. It's not... Uh, actually, I'll just show it to you now. Squirrel! Squirreling is fun, Tracy. It's what? I said squirreling is fun. Well, it's, we what get you get. it's what you get. If you're hanging out with me, you just have to <laughs> hold on for the ride. Um, yeah, so this is two layers of the Hobbs 8020 bleached. Um, and it's it's quite, it's stiff. Now, this has never been washed because I've only ever used it as a hanging. I'm sure if I washed it, never going to happen. Um, I'm sure if I washed it, it would soften up, but it's quite stiff. Uh, it's nice and thick. You can see the texture really, really good with the quilting. Um, and I just love it. It hangs beautifully. You can use that in a, in a single layer or a double layer. When we start to mix uh, Hobbs 8020 with wool or poly, then you're going to get, see how much flatter that's sitting compared to the one that was just the two, the two wools, how it's sort of distorted. So you get the texture from the wool, but you've got the, the structure from the hobs on the back or the 80-20, sorry, on the back. Now this is something different. That's the regular. This is Pelon. This is this one actually is fusible. Um, it's just their fleece. It's super thin. So great for a table runner or placemats or something like that because it is super thin. Now, if you have a look at that, you're not going to see a ton of texture with your quilting. You'll get a little bit, but not as much. Um, it's soft. But I honestly, this Pelon stuff, it would be great for um, if you were quilting up something and then you were going to cut it all out and turn it into a bag or a wallet or something like that. Or like I said, use it as a like a bed runner or a, a like a table runner across a hutch or across your table or whatever or placemats or coasters, something like that, because it's got some it's got some structure to it and it's a little bit stiff, but it's nice and thin. Okay. Got tops. These were all in such good order. I worked so hard. My brain just doesn't do organization very well. So give me a sec. This is the two layers of Hobbs 8020. So a lot more texture. And I would put this in a bed, in a bed quilt. There's the one layer, there's the two layers. You see how nice and straight that sits? Like it's not so lofty um, that it's gonna be like puffy looking, but it's still nice and soft. So it's gonna drape nicely. 
if you put it on a bed and that would just give you an extra layer of warmth if you wanted a little bit heavier all right i find if i look at the bleached the 80 20 bleached and black in comparison to the regular natural fiber color um, these do feel in the beginning they do feel different so this one feels stiff a little stiffer um, and a little uh, less malleable than this once it's washed it's the same and the black is the same as well um, I'm gonna go with the theory that it's got to do with the dyeing process as well this is still soft but um, not quite as floppy as this is in the beginning right Oh, rando tip. If you're using chalk, uh, either the pounce powder or um, a white chalk mark, a white chalk pencil to mark your stuff, a little square of this rubs out the chalk. Amazing. Way amazing. Like better than if you were to use this color. Don't ask me why. I don't know. I just, this is what I use to rub out chalk. <coughs> Excuse me. And here's something fun. This is flex foam. So it's a flexible foam. You would use this in bag making, um, art projects, uh, just for fun. If you were making a liner for something, like a liner for, uh, say, a saddlebag on a motorcycle or something like that, this stuff quilts up like butter as well it's beautiful and it's it's quite stiff right so it's got a lot of it's got a lot of structure to it so it would mold you know think of that as the bottom of a bag or a panel on a bag or something and that works that works really well obviously not a bed quilt but uh, i'd be inclined to actually try that use this as part of a wall hanging put the 80 20 behind it and put a layer of this on there and see what happens that would be very stiff and um it would stay like really super straight do you want to stop for questions yep that's what i'm just you read my mind sweetheart that was awesome perfect that was am that was fabulous am i talking no. to you okay i love your random tip i'm gonna go with the reason that the black is so good is because it's got more dye in it <laughs> well, I think that it works beautifully like you you rub that chalk pencil it's gone man that's mm -hmm. i'm Fabulous. And it doesn't leave, it won't leave any like black fibers on, on your stuff either. Okay, carry on. Uh, so, um, Jesse said quilted coats are awesome using Pellon fusible. Now, Jesse is one who knows. Mm -hmm. You should see Jesse's coats. Are He's they so beautiful? Oh, yeah, they are. <laughs> awesome. Um, and then we have somebody asking if we can talk about bamboo batting. Yeah. Do you want me to go? So yeah, I am not. I'm gonna back out. I haven't used bamboo batting just because it's not necessarily like um, some people. A few people have asked for it, but I don't have. If I got some, it would probably sit for a while. Yeah. Bamboo batting is beautiful. Um, it's very thin. It's very mm -hmm. light. It's very summer quilty kind of stuff. It's super floppy. It's very fluffy, like uh, not fluffy sort of linty, you know, like you'll be covered in it until the quilt is completely finished. You'll have like bamboo fuzz all over you. Uh, you're not going to get very much texture at all with your quilting though, because it is so thin. Um, so you, you know, if it's, if you want texture, either double it up and see how that works or um, put it as like a, a, just another layer. Do you know what I mean? Um, but it is very floppy and it's very light. It's lovely, but no texture. Won't get any texture. I also feel it's a little bit on the pricey end for some things as well. So it's a, it's a hard it's a hard sell sometimes. If I just had that, it would be a hard sell in the store. I think. Yeah, but it's the ones who, right. The ones who love it love it. So it's really good. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have Beverly. Do you find that 100% cotton in either Hobbs or Dream causes the quilt to wrinkle more after washing? I don't. I haven't found that really. I don't know, but I. 
to be honest, it's been a long time since I've made a quilt, quilted it, bound it, and thrown it, and, like, taken it home and put it in the washer. Like, all my right. stuff gets hung and stays here. So. <laughs> yes. Um, I think the, co the, the cotton in the 80-20, there's only 20% poly. So I wouldn't think that it's going to be mm -hmm. that drastic of a change because there's cotton in both. And so that is probably a little bit more what on the the what the package would say for shrinkers, right? Or what is what are you thinking, Angela? I'm sorry. <laughs> Something else is happening on my end. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> Never mind. I thought you were going no, good. Where did you go? So okay, so here's a question. Can anybody hear the dryer at my end? Because I can go and turn it off if you guys can hear it. No, oh I cannot gosh. hear it. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. This is what lives are about, everybody. The real world. Angela yeah. Clark is doing laundry. <laughs> yeah, my mother-in-law is doing her, doing her laundry, but um, it's okay. The whole shrinkage thing, too. Got it, it. Check there. It also depends on whether or not you've washed your um, your fabric and your backing. True. That that has a lot to do with what happens to it after it goes, like after it's made and it goes in the mm -hmm. wash. If you want it to be less quilty looking. You want to wash everything first, not the batting. Oh, no, you can wash batting. I've never washed batting. I've put it in a warm dryer and like, like misted some, misted some yeah. water in there to let it kind of fluff up. Yeah. I've gotten it wet. I, I, mean, I haven't agitated bat, batting, but like yeah. put it in, get it wet and then put it in the dryer. Yeah. Right. 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 Don't, Good. don't let it spin. Right. That would be a, a mess. Right. Um, but no, I've used bamboo. I've used silk batting. Wool and silk batting, wool and cotton batting, silk and wool batting, right? These all different kinds of batting. So that aren't considered traditional battings. Um, some of the show quilters use wool and silk because that doesn't weigh anything. So it keeps the cost of them shipping their, their quilts down. And also because they're both natural fibers, when they hang, the wrinkles just fall out. Yeah, they have... Ah. They have no memory, those, yeah. um, those yeah. battings. So, you know, it's, um, there's lots of different reasons to use different battings. And some of the really, like what I would, cons I would kill, when you start mixing silk with stuff, I would consider that like specialty batting, right? Not mm -hmm. just stuff that, that we're all going to use. Because um, that's expensive. You think wool's expensive? Put silk with it. It's, it's really expensive. But... It's beautiful and it hangs beautifully. Mm -hmm. um, and, but the most of the people that I know that are using it are show quilters. I mean, they're mm -hmm. people who are actually quilting for show money, right? Speaking of show quilters, guess what quilt I got to see today? Claudia's. Oh, Claudia's? Yes. Okay, so yeah, I got to hang one of hers in my showroom for a year. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Every day I would walk in and the whole, it, if, okay, so we're talking about Claudia File um, from mm -hmm. Germany. Mm -hmm. um, and she is an APQS rep as well. Um, she is incredible and she uses Dvorsky crystals. She does use silk batting in her quilts. Mm -hmm. um, and, and silk. Yeah. It, it's the, the quilts are silk. The thread is silk. The only thing that's not silk is the Dvorsky crystals. Um, and when I say that her quilt shimmer, it's mm -hmm. like a light show when the light hits them. There's mm -hmm. thousands of crystals on it. They are incredible. So, yeah. So, Sherry brought up a good point on an opinion here that the bamboo, but the more bamboo is washed, the more it loses uh, structure. Yeah. So, we had a question earlier, and I probably lost it on what batting to, and you've been answering those questions, Tracy, as we move along, what batting to use for what project. So that right. is something, if you're going to use a new batting that's new to you, I would probably be researching what it's you what it's used is for. So if I'm making a baby quilt, I'm not going to use polyester because I want the baby, I want that baby quilt to breathe because polyester doesn't breathe. But if it, um, I mean, there's all of that stuff, but I wouldn't be using silk on a baby blanket or bamboo because it's going to be washed so much that some of those fibers could lose some of their structure as well. If it's going to be washed in hot water because it's puked on and all of that good stuff, right? Washable wool, probably not a good idea on a baby quilt either. No. Right, right, right. I, at, at that point, I'd, I'd use Hobbs 8020. 
Yeah. And I or, use or green baby. It's what 20, I use. But just an 80 20 blend. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And Jesse put here for everybody in the comments, some of the shrinkage that three to 5% on uh, Hobbs cotton. And so there's some of that. Um, and also mm -hmm. the questions, Paula brought up something when you're working with charity quilts, we got that beautiful thing called Frankenbat. There's no telling what's in the charity quilts at my showroom because somebody, I think you, I showed them to you, didn't I? At one point, there'll be 300 pieces of batting sewn together to go inside of a quilt from by my guild, and they're not using the same type of batting. So it could be literally anything in that quilt. Um, that's a challenge because you never know. They're not facing the batting the same way. Scrims will be up, scrims will be down. Um, you know, they're stretching it when they're sewing it together because they just zigzag it together quick. And I mean, sometimes the pieces are small, guys. They throw nothing away. So, now, yeah. to, to interrupt there for or interject for one second, have you guys ever used the batting seam tape? Because that's how I put batting together. <laughs> that's how I do it when I have one seam for like a customer to do, for sure. Um, I love that. It would be super expensive for my guild to do it at the level of franken batting that they're doing yeah um, yeah probably then but i mean if you're at home and you're doing your own stuff and you've mm -hmm. just got a bunch of cutoffs from a bunch of bottoms you could just use the batting seam tape mm -hmm. and then it's nice and flat and it's permanent you'll never yeah. know it's there it's awesome stuff yeah that yeah it does it's like heat heat infused batting together or something like that it's the name of it useful on one side mm -hmm. for those of you who don't know i have some here i'll pop over and grab it in a second if anybody wants to see it it comes on a roll and it's um it's about this wide it's fusible yeah. on one side and it's almost like gauze yeah and mm -hmm. you basically it's... just you butt your batting yeah. up together um there's more to it than that but you butt your batting up together and then uh -huh. you just um steam lightly with your iron all the way down mm -hmm. it and it just adheres and it's totally flat you'll never know it's there awesome. you can use fusible lightweight fusible interfacing too um, but you have to cut that into strips. Yep, that would work too. Oh. I, I, I've used that because I have that in the store when we've had some shortages of some for yeah. customers. Yeah. And that is, they have never ever complained about it. They said it's great. And so, again, you just got to make sure you get the iron over. We actually do it while it's on the long arm. Yes. Yeah. Somebody else said the same thing. See? Yeah. Oh, yeah. From leftover t-shirt quilts. Oh, good. And that was a good um, use, Annette. Very much nice yeah. for leftover t-shirt quilts. That's a great idea. Oh, yeah. The Stacy Shapeflex or not Stacy Shapeflex? What is it? SF one? No, that's Stacy. Yeah, is I use that one hundred and one. Yeah. SF one hundred and one. Uh -uh. Mm hmm. <laughs> mm hmm. Yeah. Right. Awesome. What else can we talk about with batting? I would just say have fun and mix and match and have. I mean. I mean, yeah, yeah, you need to try it. I mean, I wouldn't, you know, you don't want to try it on a king size quilt. Try it on something small, right? And a lot of these places you can get a crib size batting or you can get a craft size batting, right? So get a small one, see what it's like. You're either <laughs> going to like it or you're not. Um, yeah. <laughs> so before we leave the tape issue, Joanne asked if you need to put it on both sides or just one. And it's just one side. Just one. Yeah. Same with the interfacing if you use, you know, fusible interfacing as well. Um, what I would probably say is batting leads into a little bit of, uh, you know, the more batting you use, the, the better I feel like some of more forgiving your tension can be or you have to yeah. adjust your tension. So, yeah, and you can get, you can get different thicknesses of batting too. So like, um, if you look at dream cotton, dream cotton comes in four different thicknesses. So the request level is really made for hand quilting. It's not even made for like domestic machine quilting. It's super, super thin. Um, so like I sell, I start with select as opposed to request because you can put your fingers through request trying to smooth it out on your long arm. Mm -hmm. um, I have custom people who want it because it's hot here, right? So people want to use their quilts year round. They think mm -hmm. they want that. And I'm like, go with select. It's still breathable. You're still going to be able to use it in North Carolina in the summer. We, we use air conditioning here. So you're still going to need a quilt in the summer, right? Um, so, but 
I like using Supreme, which is the heaviest. It's really thick and it's really warm. <laughs> so, I don't know, but just know you can get different thicknesses too in some lines. Not They don't all do them, but yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the most cost effective? Pack? <laughs> I love that question. Well, it's a good question. It's a great, it's question. A great question. It is a great question. I'm laughing at it because I'm like, oh, is there anything cost effective in what we do? Yes, um, there is. Yes, there is. Don't there use is. cheap, crappy batting. Uh uh. No. Don't use cheap. Yeah, so that would be the first time, one. An effort into piecing your quilt and using really nice fabric and probably getting good backing fabric and all those things and good thread and everything. Don't, don't phone it in when it comes to the batting because it's, it's just as important as all the other layers, right? Yeah. And um, if you are looking at a big batting or cheaper batting, if you lay it, like not one of the brands that we've, we've said, obviously we're only talking about really good battings. Um, but if you go to your local sewing shop or sewing center, not, your store, right? Just your sewing store, not a local quilt store, right? And a big box using, store, a big yeah, box store. A big box store that you can use your 50% coupon off and you're using mm -hmm. the um, the batting that's really cheap there. Right. Um, when you roll that stuff out, like you'll have places that are an inch thick and places that you can see through, right? So, and I, yes. I have people bring it in because it is inexpensive and, and I understand what they're, they're trying to save money somewhere. Um, but then I'm like, okay, so if you don't unroll this, you can take it back and return it. But as soon as we take it out and start unrolling it, they're not going to take it back, right? So if I unroll this, this is what we're going to find. And then my question is, where would you like me to balance your tension? Do you want it to be super tight on the thick parts where it doesn't look right at all? Or do you want to see loops on the thin parts? Um, and I, I don't really have a choice, right? Because it's happening con constantly throughout the batting. So I've had a couple of people unroll it and then they're like, just like donate it to the guild. And I'm like, just like put it in the trash, right? Because I don't even want to use it for the guild cults because it's not the same thickness all the way through. Um, right. So just be aware of that. You can, you can think you're saving yourself money and you're actually giving yourself headaches, right? right. Um, that being said, that same store sells Warm and Natural, which while it is not my favorite um, batting to put in a bed quilt does quilt you know wall quilts pretty well because i prefer warm and white which is bleached white um, because warm and natural has the cotton balls the little flex or the cotton ball on the outside of the cotton um still in the batting and sometimes you can see that through your material so right. which is why i'm not super you know want to do warm and natural that being said warm is is in North Carolina, they have a manufacturing site here in Hendersonville. So cost wise for me to get in warm products is not as expensive as me getting Hobbs in from Texas. Right. Right. Um, so that's something to think about when you're getting batting, where yes, is your gym. batting manufactured? Can you save on a good quality batting by finding a batting that the shipping isn't going to be so much on? Right. right. And that's not just, I mean, and I don't mean shipping like from the manufacturer to you. If you're buying it at a quilt store, we have to put, pay shipping and mm -hmm. that gets passed on to you as well. Okay. Right. So it would be, I, my gut is if, if we were all to talk, we would have three different prices on Quilter's Dream because Quilter's Dream is close to me. It's only about right. two and a half hours for me, right? It's not to me or Tracy. Right, and it's gonna be a long haul truck to get to Tracy or to Kathy and Tracy's gonna have to pay import on it, right? Right. And whatever the exchange rate is for that day, right, Tracy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's why we like Wonderful Thread because it's from Canada. It's from Canada. <laughs> And we pay the import on it. <laughs> so, yeah. so um, somebody actually also said that they found that they feel like the quilt wants to fold where they put the tape. I wouldn't wonder if that was still the situation after you washed it or after it got to be a little bit softer. I'm not sure, but I mean, I'll go with that. That's good. Yeah. And then um, and, um, huh? she, needs, she needs to make sure. So when you're attaching batting, if you put them so that they overlap a little bit, 
this is in one of my videos from the from the live eight Monday night lives that I did a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, you overlap them and then you cut through both layers and then you remove the little bottom skinny bit from the one edge and on the top edge you pull the top piece off and then they will lay perfect, right up perfectly nested together because you trim them at the same time and then just remove the extras and you get them right right together so if it's actually folding then you um, I would say you need to put your batting so that it's actually like touching, touching, and then it won't fold. It won't do that. But okay. it will if there's a little gap. Yeah. Ah, great hint. And she great does hint. have a good video on it. And someone had actually um, talked about it in the feed earlier that you have a good mm -hmm. video on it too. Yeah. And then you mentioned it a little bit um angela what would you use for good hand quilting and that was what you Quilting's said earlier cotton request yeah it needles beautifully so you're talking to the girl who doesn't hand quilt but it does needle beautifully. <laughs> but you have family members who do so I do. you have people i yeah. do have family members who do i, I yeah that's not me <laughs> if you saw our podcast the other day it was kind of funny because i'm like yeah i do i do nothing hand I'm not doing it yeah Right. So again, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. And Tracy, that so somebody just said what you just said there. Your video, and then she, Jesse put Posted a link to it, which is awesome. Oh. Yay! <laughs> Go, Jesse. <laughs> she is awesome. Yes, it sounds like she's a great. Yes, and Jen, that person also said, I don't know who that is, but said that works like a dream, Tracy. So that's awesome. So your video is doing some great things. So there's great yeah. help out there for you guys. Yeah. Batting is a fun, fun thing. I love actually, can I just tell you, I, I love when my you beat my FedEx guy is like, I got lots of packages for you. <laughs> and, and then I pick them up and go, I don't weigh anything. <laughs> big boxes. Right, should, right, right. We should do talk, you talked a bit a little bit about it, Angela. Um if you've got if you've got a quilt with um, you were talking about black batting, mm -hmm. so black batting on darks and all that kind of stuff. But if you've got a quilt that's either mostly white or light, yeah, consider using bleached batting mm -hmm. because it'll keep your white background or it'll and keep it bright. off white backgrounds uh, brighter. Mm -hmm. um, and I would also like to run into just a little bit of the backing versus the quilt top. Can we talk about that just for one second? Because it all has to do with each other. Please. Sure. All right. So for example, if you've got a quilt top that's white, red, and black. Yeah. White background with red and black accents. <laughs> it's mostly a white top. Don't put a black backing on it. Don't put a red backing on it. I would use a medium, a light to medium gray. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So instead of having a huge, a huge high contrast between the top and the bottom, not color wise, but value wise, um, you're going to have much better success. Um, even with a white batting, if you've got a black backing and it's the, it's the fabric where it's just as black on the wrong side as it is on the outside, you're going to run the risk of having that black backing shadow through and it'll shadow right through like 80 20 it'll shadow right through and you'll and it'll dull the white so consider the color of the batting with what you're working with and i'm not trying to over complicate things and make make it seem like it's like the biggest decision you'll ever make in your life but just consider those things um and try with your backings to just balance the value in instead and same with the opposite if you've got a like angela you've got a black backing with mm -hmm. jewel tones, don't mm -hmm. put white backing on it. Mm -mm. Don't, don't do that because you're just asking for problems. Oh yeah, Cam, I'm pretty sure there's black batting on that quilt, and it's not even that's not solid black. It's a batik. Yeah, um, but I'm sure that there's black batting in it. All right, I love black backing. Uh, black batting. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So I guess the whole the moral of the story. So if you want to try some new batting, try it on a small subject. You could even do a quilt as you go and do it and then see how you like that batting, right? Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. so. Okay, so in case everyone wonder what, what's going on with me trying to keep a straight face, not being able to, I have a 50 pound puppy sitting here deciding that, yeah, she needs attention. So, yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Her daddy's not here tonight. So, oh, that's here. right. He traveled. Yeah. 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 He's on travel today. So, um, she's in here with me. I thought she did really good for the first bit, though. So, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> and I'm by so, myself. I have no interruptions tonight. Uh, Tracy which is rare though. for you. So, yeah. I know. Oh, no, I I'm know. not totally by myself. Peanut is here. And so, at one point, she did start to walk across here and she's looking at me in her tail's wagon. I'm like, oh, please don't have to pee. We can't do that right now. <laughs> 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 Maybe what's going on? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. She was at puppy play day all day, so now she's yeah. Just like you're making me be quiet, not happening. Um, so yeah. Oh, are there, are there yeah. any questions? No, there's a funny story. Margaret said that she uh, got the, that Amazon squished her box of uh, plastic so it would cost less to ship it. And then I'm sure that was quite fun when you opened it. I love. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. That thing where that big blow up thing, you open it and the thing just comes bursting out of the box and goes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Oh. All right. Yeah, be careful. Oh, you want to see Angela's dog. Oh, okay. Let me see if I can do this. This is going to be fun. I have two of them in here with me. So let's see. Come here, Aids. This is Ada. Can you see Ada? Come here, Ada. That's Ada. Aww. She's the puppy. And then there's a bigger black German Shepherd behind her, and that's Tessa. So yeah, I have two of them. I have big you dogs. Get real, you get real dogs. I have big girls. Yeah, I do. <laughs> real dogs. <laughs> so, yeah. Real dogs. That is She's so funny. Up. Nobody gets to see Peanut. <laughs> this cute little Chihuahua. She is adorable. She is adorable. I have a Chihuahua. Yeah. Yeah. All right. There she so, is. is she coming? Yeah. Yeah. She'll be able to pick her up and nicely show her. I can't do that with Aww, my dog. Oh, look at her. She's a sweetie, too. She's 14. And she comes to work with me every day now because we lost our other dog two weeks ago. And Peanut's never been without Molly, so I've been bringing her to work so that she's just a, I don't know. I don't know if I'm bringing her to work for me or bringing her to work for her, but she yeah. comes today. <laughs> How about both stand? Yeah. yeah. It's your right, story so gotta... if you do your rules. Yeah, I know. Yeah. The... I can do what I want. Oh, that's, yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, so... Oh, we got Anne from Iowa joining. Oh, I'm so excited. This is so cool, you guys. Like, we were on all the continents, so it's really awesome. So get your friends to join the Quilting Academy. More fun is coming, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I mentioned something earlier. We started a podcast. We're doing everything. We don't know what we're doing anymore. <laughs> we never sleep. We never sleep. We don't sleep anymore. Sleep is optional. <laughs> it's not any fun. Um, but we did start a podcast this week. So that's new. We did. That aired on Monday. So it's on my YouTube channel. It's on Angela's YouTube channel. on Happy's YouTube channel. So you can watch on whichever channel you want. Um, that's fun. Yeah. It's good. Oh, um, oh, that's a good one. Don't you worry about people with animal allergies. I do. So, and I even have an employee that's allergic to dogs. Um, so my dogs are not allowed in my showroom and they were not allowed in my studio when I was quilting from home. That being said, they are allowed around me. So it, it is something I have to worry about. So we keep lots of lint rollers. We try to do everything we can. And Tracy's dog isn't going to be around the quilt. Um, no. Like my dogs are big enough. They can brush up against a quilt. Tracy's Penis really is not. not. Right. And so, she's yeah. old and she's older and she just got through a loss. And so we need to have her and be loved yeah. and to be yeah. laying in her little dog beds because she's yeah. she's a good dog. So, and yes, there's a thing down in this area about having cats at quilt stores. So it's kind of a Ooh. normal thing to have animals at quilt stores down here. All right. So we got two people asking about the Quilting Academy. Who wants to take that? 
you. Okay. So the Quilting Academy is a social, yeah, here we go again, um, <laughs> social media um, platform that Tracy and Kathy and I started. Um, and it's uh, so that you can talk about quilting and it gives you that Facebook type vibe, um, meaning that you can chat, you can post things. Um, we're doing education up there, but it's isolated. So you're also not going to hear you know, everything about your college when you go on. So the whole idea is to give us a community where we can talk, where, um, you know, it's just you. We have a lot of people that don't want to be on Facebook anymore. So right. um, we're trying to fill a void and get something off of Facebook. The cool thing about it is that we can, we have a lot more control about what we can and can't do um, than we do on Facebook. So um, we can break things up differently and, and try to make it so that you can find what you're looking for. Like we have sections of, they're called spaces. We have spaces just for quilt path, which is, um, the computerized system that all three of us have. We have some for free motion. We have ones on APQS maintenance, which we all know. So we're able to populate that. We are hoping to get some other, other brand of maintenance in, um, mm -hmm. specifically probably the next two that we get will be Juki and Janome because we have a Juki and Janome dealer on our group. Um, so it's the whole idea is to be able to do education and just to have a community where, you know, we can build it together because it's not about the three of us. It's about us building a community where you guys are getting what you need and we're able to help. Right. Awesome. And yeah. It's free. And it's free. Doesn't and it's free. Any. This is all free. <laughs> so yeah. All right. All free. Yeah. So yeah, there's a link in um, all of our descriptions on all of the videos so that you can go. It'll take you right to the membership to join if you want to join. And it's just an email address, password type situation. So yeah. yes, there's that Susie, there's links on all of our YouTube channels for this, for the talks mm -hmm. that happen with it on the Quirky yeah. Quilters. Um, you can subscribe to all of our channels that would be phenomenal i'm the one who's lagging behind in the like column here only on all you YouTube. have to do is so, uh, only on youtube it's like a way ahead of us on facebook but because oh. <laughs> i can only concentrate on like five things at one time not just 27. okay um but we have all of these videos so fabric bash is one that's my store thread waggle Right there, because you can see our names right here uh, is Angela and Whirls in Swirls, which Tracy, I had to spell that three times for our class today. <laughs> Walter, General, Iris. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't go there. I just went very slowly. And then you can join and then you'll be accepted in and it's free. And there's some questions that. We're asking everybody to read the questions because we want to keep this drama free. This is a happy quilting community where we can yeah. all just learn from each other. So, and to be patient with us because this is a new community yeah. and Tracy has a full-time job running in business. Angela's learning her business. I'm running my business. Plus every once in a while, I like to see my family. I won't see them until like Friday night, but it'll be all good. So... Next up, next up, uh, we'll have another one of these lives in a month, and it's going to be in three weeks, actually, because this one got pushed back because uh, Jacob and I had a long arm <laughs> delivery in Missouri that went bad. And so we had to um, go get some parts, which we were out in the middle of nowhere. We had to go into town. It was long story. But anyway, um, so we are going to be three weeks from now. Yeah. I scheduled a class that, that's for the same time. So we <coughs> had yeah, Tracy was ready for that. And she had all the samples done. So yes. the two people that weren't doing as much messed up. Yes. <laughs> Big time. Big time. It's all good. It's all Tracy, good. do you have any batting tape there that you can show them? Uh, yeah, you'll have to talk amongst yourselves. For okay. A okay. She's going to go we'll, home. We'll talk here. You're fine. You're fine. We'll keep talking, guys. Um, So yeah. we have a podcast that's going to come out on Monday nights. We have another three weeks. We're going to do a live. Angela's going to have her project listed on the Quilting Academy. I do projects on the long arm and um, do fun things, not even cotton related, but maybe leather and some other fun things related on the long arm. And Tracy's going to do some fun things here real quick as well. We got some really 
great things um, planned. She's even opening it up for you. Wow. Yeah, no kidding. So when you look for it, you're just going to look for batting seam tape. And like the girl said, you could use a lightweight interfacing as well. Um, but it's just gauzy. There we go. So this particular one comes in this width, and that's all you need. And then it's fusible on one side. You can feel the side that the glue is on. And you just use a nice hot iron um, and steam it down. And you only need to put it on one side. All right. And it'll be fine. And, it's, and it washes like a dream. You can't feel it after you've quilt. Like, mm -hmm. you can't feel it at all. You'd never know it was in there. So, Tracy, um, later in a couple of days, maybe over the weekend, can you take some pictures of the sample and uh, put this in the Quilting Academy so we can see them? These samples? Yes, ma'am. Oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Okay, Sue, watch for that. It's going to be coming. All right. We got some. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Oh, no. Are you unsewing? Oh, oh. I can't read it. What's, it. what's her name? What's it's been great name? learning while Jack the Ripper and I work away. Toby, I'm, for, I'm too Toby. far from the tablet, so it's hard for me to read um, the I name. Can't read, I can't read her name. I think Toby. And then this has been great learning while Jack the Ripper and I work. So I'm glad we could be entertaining for you as well and educational while you're doing some mind-numbing unsewing. I so um, that's painful. Yeah, it is. All right. So and hey, ladies, Jesse posted the link for uh Kim so that she could could get oh. straight to what the package looked like. Thank and that you, was Jesse. that the person when we used in the uh seam ripper was Susan. So yes. she's got oh. a unique oh. name. Okay, Susan. Thank you, hun. <laughs> All right, you guys are awesome. We appreciate every single one of you. Um, if you could share some of this information on our channels, that would be fabulous to help us grow so we can bring more of this quilting community together. So we need your help. So if you can share some of this on your Facebook groups or on your um, social media, the links to the web, to our YouTube channels, if you want, if you're wherever you're watching, if you can just share it, that would be fabulous. Yeah. Join the Quilting Academy. We'll have the link out there. Mm -hmm. You know what else helps the uh, whole algorithm and helps the um, videos get out to more people is to just hit the like button. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the like button. Uh, what's one one YouTuber I watch? She says, smash that like button on the way out. Yep. It always makes me cringe a little bit when she says that, but I get it. So yep. if you, you know, hit the like button and if you've got comments or anything, put them in the, put them in the comments below too because that also helps and then more people will see them and it doesn't cost anything to hit the to hit the like, like button and mm -hmm. we would really appreciate it tracy right. margaret said that this was great and now she's really excited <laughs> margaret has a brand new baby coming uh, yes, she does. it got shipped today yes yeah, so she's very excited we're going to make an appointment for me to go over and uh, spend some time there and get her all set up when it arrives so Patricia asked, what about 70-30 blends? Oh, good question. They I use quote, them. Yeah, they quote a lot like 80-20, to be honest yeah. with you. I mean, that, that sounds like a cop-out, but I've used 70-30 and 50-50. Yeah. Um, they get stiffer cotton. the more poly you get into them, right? So they're softer if they have more cotton. They're a little stiffer. Um, you, you're getting, it's going to feel a little more like a poly, 100% poly batting as they add poly to it. Um, but you're still getting some cotton, so you still have breathability in it, right? So 7030s are great. Can All I right. say something about bagged batting before we go? Oh, yeah, yeah please. I don't, <laughs> like, I don't like it. I don't like it either. I don't like it. Um, even the even the brands that I like, what happens when they when they pre-cut batting and they roll it all up with a machine and they jam it into a bag, sometimes stuff happens to the batting. And when it comes out, um, depending on what kind of batting it is, it can kind of come out and roll out like a nasty old sleeping bag that's been in a closet for five years. Um, what you might find with some of those battings when you open it is that uneven loft, mm -hmm. just from it being stretched and put into the bag and all that stuff. Um, and that's when you're gonna run into intermittent tension issues because you've got thin spots and thick spots. So if you have a batting that's in a bag Take it out, mm -hmm. um, put it in the dryer. You can either use your mister and just a little bit or put a damp washcloth in there with it and fluff it up. 
and then take it out and just take a look at it first to make sure that the loft in the batting is um, is even and, and mm -hmm. you don't have those, those pull spots or the thick spots or thin spots. It's just going to give you a headache. The best way to buy batting is right off the roll because then it's already fluffy. Um, it's only got the one fold at the top, which is a really soft fold. And when it comes off, it's just nice and flat and easy to work with, easy to lay down. You won't have to worry so much about folds. Like, you know, when you lay it on the machine, you won't have to worry about it all being all crunchy and crispy because it's all been in a bag. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's just my thoughts on bag cool. batting. They get and even if it's comments, but that's fine. Yeah. That's my opinion. Even if it's on a roll, when you get to the inside of the roll, sometimes you need to let it relax overnight before you use yes. it because it gets that the fold gets, you know, crimped up in there. Yeah. So, yeah. So <laughs> fluff it up, but always check the loft with, to make sure it's nice and even, and it'll mm -hmm. save you a lot of headaches with your tension. Right. And I sell rolled batting in the store, um, not online, but I do sell it in the store. So we could potentially do that. So and I'm sure you guys have it as well. Um, Australia. Okay. Okay. We've had lots of good people here. We got to probably end this with the, some of the questions. So um, Michelle, we had a thread talk. If you want to, we did a thread talk. If you want to look at it, either thread waggle, whirls and swirls or fabric bash, we did a thread talk and that will help you with that one, hun. So you can rewatch that. It's under on our YouTube channels. All right. Okay. I think we're going to have to end it guys. It's we're over an hour or an hour oh, and wow. 11 minutes. Yeah. So let's let everybody get back onto their evening. The world's going to end. We went over an hour. No, it's not going to end. <laughs> I know. I know. Nobody. Um, okay. Yeah. It's all good. Everybody's awesome. So we could probably go on for several more ever, and I will probably just say, watch for some more great stuff. Join the Quilting Academy, follow on YouTube, share as much as possible and help us to grow so we can help this community from like all over the world grow closer. All right, you guys are awesome. Have a good night. Bye. Happy quilting.